Listening in to all this, probably champing at the bit to jump in here, Perry. And what's your take? You think that uh, Mr. Sam Bankman Freed was ever truly a billionaire or was just a house of fake cards the entire time? Yeah, hey, good morning and happy Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, the, the hearing, as well as the letter that you mentioned, it brought more to light of what we already know. SBF and FTX, it was a fraud and it needed to be shut down. But it wasn't the regulators, it wasn't law enforcement, and it wasn't the cops on the beat that brought this down. It was the crypto industry itself that exposed FTX and brought to its demise. Look, it's clear this is a huge mess. The bigger question is, how could this have happened right under the nose of all the regulators? How could this have happened right under the nose of all the banks? We learned yesterday uh, Well, Perry, that and FTX half the regulators used... ended up working for FTX, did they not? I mean, so you had people on the CFTC that re re retired or resigned and then went to work, at least one person, high-level regulator, on the board. So, I mean, they're, they're, again, we get into this kind of this messy-type relationship, which just, I think, fair to say, ticks people off. On a macro level, Perry, and we, we've got a Wall Street Journal op-ed from Senator Elizabeth Warren. She says, and this is the headline, her, her, it's her words, not mine, regulate crypto or it'll take down the economy. Now, again, maybe that's a little bit hyperbole, but do you think crypto has the ability to, quote, take down the economy? Yeah, it's completely ridiculous. This is just trying to catch headlines. First off, we, we've seen statements from Secretary Yellen, who said there's been very little spillover from the takedown of, of Mount Gox into the larger financial system. The industry is very much committed to keeping crypto and the larger financial, uh, financial services industry separate. Uh, uh, preventing contagion and stability to the markets. Uh, the industry today is uh, you know, valued under $1 trillion. This is nowhere near the, the level of, of systemic. Uh, Senator Warren has this wrong, and she's going to go down in history on the wrong side of this. Perian, though, help us, help us understand this. And we were talking about just the valuations of all of these different coins, um, what's really behind them. Uh, frankly, in many cases, very, very, very little, uh, except what might be described as a faith in them. That's kind of what's going on here and how liquid they really are. So when you look at an FTT token, or you looked at Solana, or you looked at all so many of the coins that ultimately seem to be backing the valuation of what FTX and Alameda, Alameda were doing was based on this idea that they had market caps in the tens of billions of dollars. And yet the truth is that on any one day, the, you know, there was no other, it wasn't like a company could come buy another company for said amount of money. And because, and, and there was also this issue of sort of a, not the largest float in the world. And so it was sort of potentially artificially inflating the price of these assets. Yeah, no, that, that's absolutely right. FTX issued their own token, the FTT token. They created their own cryptocurrency out of thin air. They used it as, as collateral. That is not a best practice in the industry. And it absolutely uh, impacted uh, the, 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 the level of, uh, of issues uh, you know, under the hood at FTX. Uh, I think it's important to note that despite the, the FTX scandal that this really brings us back to the fundamentals of crypto. The original cryptocurrency is Bitcoin and its fundamentals are strong. Everything is uh, is at all time highs except the price. Yeah. So it's important to note the total hash rate, wallet, so measure of adoption, network difficulty. These are all at or near record highs. So you have to dig a little bit deeper than the price, understand how these cryptocurrencies work. And a lot and of them were created out of, out of thin air and going well, that's, to zero. So that, that, OK, all the other stuff you mentioned, and it, it is fair to say that FTX is not Bitcoin and Bitcoin is not FTX. And uh, what I want our audience who may only be peripherally paying attention to the story to understand is the point you just made, perry -Ann. They created a token out of thin air. They're not, they're not the only ones that did it, okay? Binance has what others, others have them. They created FTT, and what I want to I ask you right now, we could ask Novogratz later, why would any sane investor, smart, whatever, accept FTT, the token, as real collateral to fund a multi-billion dollar hedge fund? You know what I'm going to do today when I leave the show? I'm going to go into a car dealer, I'm going to make I'm going to print up Sully bucks. 
okay, on the printer here at the NASDAQ, and I'm going to say, no, no, these are perfectly good, right? This is Sully Bucks, and they're backed by nothing, but you should give me a car. That's what happened. It's like the scene from Dumb and Dumber, right, where literally Jim Carrey has a bag full of fake, that's an IOU. It's 275000 That's what, who would do this? And this isn't a lot different than government money. Government money is backed by nothing. We used to be on a gold standard. All money was well, we backed by taxes. things of scarcity. You do pay taxes, a but lot. the monetary policy is absolutely broken. Fix the monetary policy, fix the money. Cur currencies that literally steal from their people through inflation is not a moral system. This is why we need Bitcoin and why we need blockchain technology.